I'm Sierra, and today I'm going to be talking about The Raven King by Maggie Stevader. This is the fourth and final book in the Raven Cycle series, and it follows our main characters, kind of picks up where it left off on their quest to find this lost, dead, but not really dead, King Glendower. This is the book where we finally find our King Glendower. I felt like it was a really good conclusion to the series, and it makes me really, really sad that it's over. The one thing that I really like about this series of books is the way that Maggie really drives home the point that in this series time is circular as opposed to linear. When you read the book you really get this feeling of timelessness and it kind of at some points it'll be slow but you'll realize a lot's actually happened and at other points it kind of speeds up and so much happens and I like the way that she plays with time not just by telling us that time is circular, but by showing us that time is circular. She did such a good job of just describing everything. Like her sentences are just so decadent and beautiful. And like they kind of feel like poetry within itself. And the way that she describes everything is so cute, quirky, sometimes a little tongue in cheek, but I love it. And Blue Sargent has to be one of my favorite female protagonists because she's just so funny, so bold, like she doesn't take anything from anybody. And I really like the sense of kind of like family and togetherness and sisterhood that they have at 300 Fox Way where Blue lives and all these sidekicks just come and go. And the thing about it is you don't fully know everyone who is and isn't blood related to her and it doesn't matter because like they're all related like if you're my cousin you're my cousin even if we're not technically really cousins there's just like a sense of like family togetherness her mother Mara I love her I like she's my mom too now please like adopt me Mara Sargent because she's so funny witty interesting and she's just so supportive of like weird things like the best part about this book is that weird things can just happen and the family will be like you're totally right. Like, we definitely have to raise, like, Gwynlian from the dead. That's pretty much all I have as far as talking about the book without talking about spoilers. So if you haven't read the book and you don't want to be spoiled, go read the book, then come back, and we'll talk spoilers. Okay, bye non-spoilers. Okay, so we find Gwyndower, and that's, like, the big thing that we've been waiting for that's what this book is all about is that Glendower is coming we're gonna find him he's a sleeper we're gonna wake him and he's gonna fix everything because he's gonna grant us a favor and then we find him and he's dead it was so disappointing like I don't know why but the thought never occurred to me no matter how obvious I guess it is now that I'm thinking back on it that Glendower would just be dead like I felt Gansey's heart just drop Suddenly, Gansey's questioning everything. He's like, why did I do this? Why did the voice say that Glendower woke me up? We find out that the voice is actually Noah who was saying that you live because of the Raven King. And Noah, in this book, he left. He went where all ghosts go, which is, we're not really sure, but hopefully a better place for him. In this book, we're introduced to a new character, and that's Henry Chang. And we kind of knew a little bit about him in the last book when he, you know, kind of caught Blue and Gansey on a secret date. But other than that, we don't really know much about Henry Chang. And I'm really mad that Maggie kept this character from us because I love Henry Chang. I wish she would have introduced him sooner so that I could have met my son sooner. I love him so much. At first, when Henry Chang was introduced, I didn't really know how to feel about him. I was like... He seems a little shady, like the thing with him in the basement in Gansey and he put like the robo bee in his hand. I was like, why is he doing that? But I guess it was his way of like making friends. Clearly I should just take a page out of Henry Chang's book. But once we kind of get into his perspective, we realize like, no, he really just wants friends. Like he's like, be my friend, be my friend. And they do, and they invite him into squad and squad feels complete except for Noah who's dead but probably watching them and loving them and laughing from beyond. He throws this toga party that Blue and Gansey go to and it's so adorable because you can tell that they just they want to be together they want to kiss each other so bad but they both know that they can't because some kind of way if they kiss then Gansey will die. Speaking of kisses 
Ronan and Adam. They kissed and it was done in the funniest way possible. Not in the way that they kissed, but just afterward, Gandhi and Adam are sitting outside at this campfire. Adam kind of vaguely asks how Gandhi knows that he's in love with Blue and or if he's in love with Blue. And Gansey at first is like, why is he so interested in my life? And then you can kind of see that something else is going on. Gansey just like, remember, we said no more secrets. And then as soon as he says that, Adam's like, Ronan kiss me. Gansey's obviously the mom friend of the group. And he just, he's like, I don't really know what to, to say. The other kiss that we get that is significant in this book is we finally get our Gansey blue kiss. I'm really glad that she described why her kiss was so lethal because we weren't sure if it was like a the reason that he's dying is because of the kiss, like kisses him and he drops dead, like a reverse Sleeping Beauty type thing, or if it's more like she kisses him and then like a few minutes later he like walks down the street and a car hits him. So we find out that the reason why Gansey dies is because they're both mirrors. Because we know Blue's a mirror, we know that she amplifies things, but Gansey, when he died on the ley line and he comes back, I guess that makes him a mirror as well. And the stronger mirror won out. That was a little odd for me, but it worked, it worked. It made sense in a weird way that everything kind of vaguely makes sense in these books. When Gansey died, I was like, 85% sure that he was gonna come back from the dead but you never really know and especially with this book because it doesn't really follow the rules of any other fantasy series so it feels kind of like there is no rules like anything can happen like maybe Gansey just stayed dead forever I thought personally that Gansey was going to be like somehow Gansey was Glendower like either like reincarnated or like when he died somehow like Glendower got put into Gansey's body. He comes back to life because they're like, please, Cape Water, like, please, 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 like, we need Gansey. We like, he's the glue. He's the mom. He's our mother. And so Cape Water grants the request and revives Gansey from the dead. It's not so much that Gansey becomes Cape Water, is it as it is that Cape Water kind of puts itself into Gansey, not personality wise, but just like essence wise. Like they give him just enough for him to live and be a person again. We find out that Blue's father is a tree, but not really a tree, more like a tree person. Basically, it's an ancient kind of tree person hybrid who is also, that's also what Gwynlian's mother was as well. The one thing that I really like explained, because we kind of find out that her mother knew that her father was a tree. So I would have just really liked to see Mara pull Artemis out of the tree because even though she's a sidekick, I just can't, the first thing that I would think after I like pulled someone out of tree form wouldn't be like, yep, Future Bay right there. That's definitely the father of my kid right there. I just wanna know how like they fell in love, like how this happened. Because even if I did fall in love, I just would have a little trouble being romantic because I like, when, when I met you, you were kind of a tree. One of the funniest scenes in this book is when Henry Chang comes to Blue School and everybody's kind of looking at her because Nobody in the town really likes the Raven boys because they're like stuck up little rich boys. So everybody's like, ew, no. Henry Chang pulls up in all his rich glory and Blue is like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna live this down. Like they're gonna talk about me so bad. And she starts thinking about all of the things that she said to other people and they're gonna be like, Blue is such a fake. And I just related to that so much because like, it was like all the shit she had ever talked about everyone in that school flashed before her eyes. When she's like, I, I can't get into this car with you. Like my rep is already kind of shot. I can't like just destroy my complete reputation of being like an elusive kind of hipster type person by getting in this car with you. And Henry's like, well, if you want, you can like give me the finger and yell at me. And she's like, that's like childish and dramatic. And two seconds later, she's like, you bastard. And she feels so good. And then two minutes later, Gansey rolls 
up with the whole Raven Boy crew. Like, okay, Blue, like, for real, we gotta go. And she's like, yeah, I'm never gonna live this down. They're gonna talk shit about me forever for the rest of my life. I'm so happy that Henry and Gansey and Blue are gonna get to travel together because Blue really wanted to travel and Gansey's just such a little adventurer. And Henry, I just love him. I wish we could get a series of just them traveling around the world and messing shit up because let's be honest, we, we know they'll probably mess some shit up, probably. Also, I hope that Gwenlian stays with their family even after like Blue goes off and is traveling the world because I love her so much. <laughs> Overall, I think The Raven Cycle is probably now tied for my favorite series along with The Lunar Chronicles and I don't really know what to do with my life now that I've finished it. I found out recently after I finished reading it because I was like, oh my gosh, I, this is like, this series is over. What am I gonna do? I need more of this series, of this world. And I find out that Maggie's going to write a spinoff series with Ronan Lynch. And at first I was like, but like, I love Blue. Like, I want Blue to be in the series. But then I was like, who am I getting? I'm gonna read it. It would, could literally just be a whole book of Ronan staring at Adam and I would buy it, read it, and love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm making videos weekly, and if you like it, you should like it and or subscribe to my channel. I would love that so much. Thank you for watching. Bye.